Hey guys, it's Dosie from HealthyVeganLife.com What I've always learned is that the human being is an omnivorous creature and we need both plants and meat to be able to survive. And that's also the thing that people oftentimes say in defense of their meat eating habits. Um, they say, oh, but I'm an omnivore, so not eating meat doesn't make sense biologically. Truth of the matter is, whether we are or whether we aren't omnivores isn't decided by whether or not we eat meat, because any creature will eat virtually anything if it's hungry enough. Whether we are omnivores or herbivores or carnivores or anything else is decided by our physiological makeup. So what I want to do today is look at our physiological traits and compare those of us to those of herbivores and those of omnivores to see what we look like most. And then what I want to talk about is our psychological traits and how we think and how we feel um, to know whether we are plant eaters or everything eaters. Let's first look at teeth. Um, when we look at incisors, we can see that omnivores have short and pointed ones, whereas herbivores have broad, flattened and spade-shaped ones. And humans also have broad, flattened and spade-shaped incisors. Good grief. When you look at canines, you can see that omnivores have long, sharp and curved canines, whereas herbivores have dull and short or long um, canines or none and humans have short and blunted ones. Then let's look at the mouth opening. Omnivores have a very big mouth opening compared to the size of their head, whereas herbivores have a relatively small um, opening of their mouth compared to the size of the head, and so do humans. We have small mouths in our big heads. Omnivores have no digestive enzymes in their saliva. However, herbivores and humans do. We have carbohydrate digesting enzymes. Now when we look at chewing, we can see that omnivores just briefly shear their food and then they swallow the food pretty much whole. Whereas herbivores really need to chew their food and so do humans. We need to really chew and get that saliva doing its trick with the digestive enzymes before we can swallow our food. Capability of metabolizing cholesterol. Omnivores are capable of digesting a whole lot of cholesterol that they get in from eating meats that have cholesterol in them. However, herbivores as well as humans have very lacking ability of um, metabolizing cholesterol. We can only metabolize about 500 milligrams per day. Next, let's have a look at the amount of food that our stomach holds. Now, the stomachs of omnivores hold about 60 to 70 percent of the total volume of their digestive tract, whereas the stomachs of herbivores hold less than 30 percent of their digestive tract, and our stomachs hold about 21 to 27 percent of the total volume of our digestive tract in food. Now our stomachs have a certain pH level that makes it very well capable of digesting the food that we were supposed to be eating. Omnivores have um, a stomach acidity of less or equal to 1, which is pretty acidic, which makes it perfect for digesting raw meat and to killing bacteria that are found in the raw meats that they are consuming. However, herbivores as well as humans have a pH level in their stomach with food in it of 4 to 5, which is um, much more to alkaline. Next we have fibre requirements. Omnivores have no fibre requirements whatsoever to get their peristalsis going, which means, you know, just the food that goes through their digestive tract. Um, no need for it. Herbivores, however, as well as humans, really do. We need to get that fiber to get our, you know, to get our food out of us. So, yeah. Omnivores have a colon length of roughly four to six times their body length. Um, but herbivores have a colon that is about 10 to 12 times their body length and humans have a colon of about 10 to 11 times the body length. Having a shorter colon is perfect for 
um, getting all that rotting meat out of the body. Um, but our bodies are not quite as fast because our colons are just ridiculously long. Nails! Those of om omnivores are sharp and pointy and very, sh very strong. Um, perfect for ripping flesh. Herbivores have blunted hooves or flat nails and humans have flat nails. We're not so good at killing. Human beings have a complex psychology and so I think our psychology will tell us a bit about how we were supposed to be eating as well. So I have six points that I would like to briefly go over. First of all, we have a strong desire to look after and care for animals. We, when we see them hurt, we want to look after them and help them and it pains us to see them suffer. It just, it makes us feel really bad because we have that empathy for them. Secondly, we admire animals' beauty and complexity. Look at the zoos that we have and the aquariums. When we see animals, we are in awe of them. We just think that they're so beautiful or so interesting or so fascinating. When we go to a zoo, it's not to look, like, look at all these beings thinking, oh, they are so delicious. We look at them from a whole different perspective. Reason number three, killing animals doesn't feel right to us. When we have to kill an animal, we have to overcome this great sense of discomfort. And I would even say a sense of knowing it isn't right to kill. If it is so natural for the human being to kill and eat creatures if we were an, omni an omnivore, then why is it so difficult? Number four, out of all the creatures that live on this planet, which is about 1.3 million, we choose to eat about 20, 20 different kinds of them per culture, and then out of those we eat like seven different kinds pretty regularly. The other 1,299,980 species we feel horrible about eating. Um, let's take for instance salmon. We like to eat salmon on toast and we don't feel bad about it. But not a clownfish. We can't eat clownfish. They are so pretty and it's Nemo. We can't eat him. Um, and the same thing goes for pigs. We like to eat their behinds with some gravy and mashed potatoes. Um, but not dogs. Dogs are a man's best friend. We love dogs. We like to look after them. We like to look at them running about as they play fetch and we get a lot of joy from seeing them. What's the difference between Nemo and Salmon? And what's the difference between pigs and dogs? These, all these animals are equally edible, yet we choose to not eat all of them. The fact that we choose to eat only a small amount of all the creatures that live and would prefer to not eat most of them, I think this reveals how we are actually not really omnivorous at all. Number five, when we see raw meat, when we see exactly what it is, we feel repulsed. This is just a really gross, uncomfortable experience for us. Seeing images of slaughterhouses, seeing images of animals being killed on the road, you know, it was sometimes you see them that have been run over, you just see their like organs coming out. We feel repulsed. We don't feel, we don't get our saliva going. We don't feel like, oh, it's so, it's so delicious. I'm going to just eat this now. If eating meat is natural to us and we are omnivores, then we could easily take children on a school excursion to a slaughterhouse. Number six, when we do eat animals, we are incredibly picky about what parts we want to eat of them and which parts we don't. Um, we leave out the skin, we leave out, leave out the eyes and other parts. The only way for us to eat these parts is to, um, to be either completely starving, to have nothing else to eat, or to grind them up really finely and be unaware of eating them when we put them in something we call sausages. Um, actual omnivores just eat the meat as they find it completely. They eat it their prey whole. My conclusion is that we're not omnivores, but that we are actually herbivores, both by our physiological makeup as well as our minds, how they work. Um, I think it's pretty clear that we're supposed to be eating plants and supposed to be living peacefully. Um, looking after animals and looking after the earth. Please give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe to my channel for more information about nutrition 
and for recipes and for what I eat in a day. Don't forget to check out my awesome vegan recipe ebook that has tons of delicious recipes that are starch based and low in fat. Uh, you can find it on my website healthyveganlife.com and I will see you guys next week. Up. Fruit fly, what are you doing? You're literally on my camera. How does my camera look like a fruit to you? Omnivores have no... So loud. You can see that omnivores... Go on, links.